Please, won't you be my neighbor? I hate this place. Can you tell me Nothing works you here. The medications don't work. Nothing do works here. Nothing works here. Uh -huh. The medications don't work. What medication I hate this place. Shut off. I've been here for source. seven years. We have... Daddy, I have a headache. Me too, honey. Hey again, YouTube. That intro? Well, I guess that's a, a window into my broken mind after trying and usually failing to get various open source projects working over the past few weeks. I've done a lot of videos on various topics surrounding text-to-speech generation over the past year. Most of what I've focused on has been about dataset creation, training methods, and training open source models. This one is going to be a little different. It's not part of a tutorial series, and could probably be two or three separate short videos. I may expand on some of the tools mentioned later down the road if I can figure out how to use them a little bit better. For now, you get this mishmash of news, me complaining, and some software stuff. I'll add timestamps in the description so you can skip around, and I'll try to keep this segmented, but I'm going to go from notes here and not try to script a whole video. There have been a lot of developments in text-to-speech in the past few months, a lot of which are really impressive, including Valley and Bark, and there have been a handful of efforts to open up the training of these new models. Unfortunately, I can't really try any of them on my hardware because I don't have anything with 24GB of VRAM. I've mainly stuck to refining training of Tortoise models because there's still room for improvement there. But I have to say I'm a little burnt out on the whole TDS space right now, and maybe that's why this latest foundational model release has me a little salty. Koki's released another foundational model to add to the mix, with support for their XTTS model pushed to the open source Koki software. XTTS is one of the models Koki uses for their Koki Studio paid voice generation service. I haven't used Koki Studio, so I can't comment at all on the service itself. The samples that I listened to in the past were on par with its competitors, I think. But they didn't really wow me. But full disclosure, no commercial TTS service has really wowed me in more, any more than the fine-tuned Tortoise models have. XTTS is based on Tortoise, so it will be a little slower than some of the other model architectures. It appears Koki has rolled all the Tortoise-style models into one, trained a multilingual tokenizer, and added a discriminator for languages. Conceivably, this has all the advantages of Tortoise, and fewer drawbacks, and of course, multi-language support. With XTTS version 1, there are 13 supported languages, with voice cloning support and 24kHz output. As with Tortoise support on Koki, this is inference only, so no training code has been released. The XTTS model is available on the Koki Model Hub, and can be used the same as any other Koki pre-trained model, so you can use the Python API, the XTTS demo applet, or the command line tool. I'll run the two demo sample clips posted with the XTTS applet through the model with a long complex sentence to see how it performs. It was the white rabbit trotting slowly back again and looking anxiously about as it went as if it had lost something. And she heard it muttering to itself, the Duchess. The Duchess. Oh my dear paws. Oh my dear paws. Oh my fur and whiskers. She'll get me executed, as sure as ferrets are ferrets. Where can I have dropped them, I wonder? The demo applet seems quite a bit slower than the command line. I think something's up with FFmpeg slowing things down here. But I haven't looked into it yet. I just use the command line or the Python API for everything. With the command line, generations seem to take 3 to 4 times real time on my system, which is an old i5-8400 with 32GB of RAM, an NVIDIA RTX 3060 12GB card. I imagine things vary quite a bit between hardware. This model seems to overcome the swapping between CPU and GPU issue that slows down Tortoise, and the speed is on par with fine-tuned Tortoise models. I expect there to be some speed improvements with XTTS soon, because currently I don't think it caches the computed latency like the Tortoise frameworks do. I generated a couple sample clips with the command line using the same sentence as before. Here I'm going to play them back to back. Because this is a diffusion type model, there will be inconsistencies between the generated sentences. It was the white rabbit trotting slowly back again, and looking anxiously about as it went, as if it had lost something. And she heard it muttering to itself, The Duchess. The Duchess! Oh my dear paws! Oh my fur and whiskers! She'll get me executed, as sure as ferrets are ferrets. Where can I have dropped them, I wonder?
It was the white rabbit, trotting slowly back again and looking anxiously about as it went as if it had lost something. And she heard it muttering to itself, the Duchess. The Duchess! Oh, my dear paws! Oh, my fur and whiskers! She'll get me executed, as sure as ferrets are ferrets. Where can I have dropped them, I wonder? It was the white rabbit, trotting slowly back again, and looking anxiously about as it went, as if it had lost something, and she heard it muttering to itself, The Duchess. The Duchess! Oh, my dear paws! Oh, my fur and whiskers! She'll get me executed, as sure as ferrets are ferrets. Where can I have dropped them, I wonder? It was the white rabbit, trotting slowly back again, and looking anxiously about as it went as if it had lost something, and she heard it muttering to itself, the Duchess. The Duchess! Oh, my dear paws! Oh, my fur and whiskers! She'll get me executed, as sure as ferrets are ferrets. Where can I have dropped them, I wonder? Missing from XTTS is the support for redacted text that can be used to influence the expression of the output. This can be pretty limiting because Cookie locks all their emotion support behind their paid API. After using XTTS for a while, I can hear some flaws in the output similar to those that can sometimes be found with Tortoise. First, the output often sounds like it has a slight harsh reverb, that metallic sound. The model also frequently struggles with repeated words and often cuts off short words. It will also occasionally get stuck on a sound and draw it out. I have similar problems when I use undertrained Tortoise AR models, so I could see this improving in the future with a little bit more training, or possibly by changing the default generation settings, but I haven't gone deep into the parameters yet. I had quite a bit of difficulty getting this up and running. So after updating to the latest version of Koki and updating the required dependencies, you'll probably also need to update transformers, accelerate, and protobuf manually. XTTS is a very impressive development, that's undeniable, but I do have to take some issues with its licensing. XTTS is released under Koki's new Koki model license, something that the company appears to be quite proud of. Again, I'm sure a tremendous amount of work went into developing the new licensing scheme. I don't want to discredit anyone's efforts. However, I don't like this license at all. Well, that's not entirely true. I like how short and readable it is. That's about it. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just an opinionated jerk online, so take this with uh, a grain of salt. But there are a number of restrictions and points of contention that I have with this license and its presentation. Here's Cookie's cheeky announcement of the new license. Hey fellow kids, do you like meme? The blog post begins with a statement that currently open model licensing is broken and goes on to distinguish between a machine learning model and source code. It makes the argument that current licenses don't effectively cover anything other than a strict definition of source code. But I don't quite understand the problem though, at least from an end user perspective. If someone were to release a model under the Apache license, what possible issues could arise from applying the term software and the resulting rights to the model? The only party I can really see benefiting from making a distinction between the two are those that want to both release a model and restrict its use cases. And that appears to be exactly what Cookie is trying to do with the Cookie model license. The model and, most importantly, its outputs can only be used for non-commercial purposes, which includes indirect commercial purposes. So technically I'm violating the license using the clips in this video, I guess. The license also stipulates that anyone that gets a copy of the outputs of the model must also receive a copy of the license and or a URL to the license. I have to say the license terms are very clearly and briefly written. However, in practice it seems to render XTTS effectively a tech demo for home hobbyists. So if by current model licensing being broken, they mean that the publishers don't hold all the rights to the model and its outputs, then I guess so? If the solution to this is such a restrictive license, I'd rather think stay broken. After all, this is a derivative project based off work done on Tortoise TTS, and Tortoise was released under the quite open Apache license. So the presentation of this license being beneficial to the open source community feels a little bit disingenuous. 
So that's the complaining section. XTTS in its current state is more or less where Tortoise is in terms of out of the box quality. Since it's a Koki production, it will probably be actively developed, and if you're looking for a home use only voice cloning model, it may be a good solution for you, especially if you refine some of the generation parameters. The last thing I want to cover is sort of a mishmash. When making voice datasets lately, after any pre-processing like background music removal using the ultimate voice remover, my workflow usually begins in Audacity. I'll usually trim out unwanted speakers and sounds, and then use the label tool to mark silences and export each segment to a separate WAV file. I use Audacity rather than AI models like those in PyNote here because, well, I tend to make better segments. In only a few sections, I can mark an hours-long track, test segments to make sure there are no clipped words, and readjust if necessary. The Audacity tool works very quickly. Originally, I was looking for a way to compare and possibly cluster and visualize the similarity of audio files. However, this still eludes me. The math and code are a little beyond me. But I did find a rather crude way to sort of get what I wanted. Generating embeddings of a sound file and then comparing it using a machine model against other audio files to generate a true or false tag indicating if the two files are from the same speaker. I've also found a simple way to generate a cosine similarity between two embeddings, and I'll show a simple way I've been using that. Also, I've got a website set up finally, but it's not going to be in any finished state for a long time. It's just an alternative to Pastebin so I can post code snippets for the videos. I'll link to those bits of code down in the description. SpeechBrain has a speaker verification model trained on the huge VoxCeleb dataset that I'm going to use to generate and compare embeddings. It's a low-code Python library that even someone as unsophisticated as myself can use. It's pretty cool stuff. I've created a data frame to hold the file names compared, the score, and a true or false label. Then I read the file names from a data set into a data frame using the read CSV function. Here I've just used the index to indicate the first file name and then iterated through the second file names. Verify Files takes two file pointer inputs and outputs a score and prediction label which is stored in the data frame I made earlier. You can count the number of files that may not match by tallying the false label. And then use the iAudio player to load up the mismatching files to verify them. Here's the representative sample. You know, weird thought, an adult might just say. And now I'll quickly skim through some of the files it tagged as mismatching. Everybody! And I tell you what to do. Cover ups, corruption. Bongo Bongo Land. And now the weather for all areas of the British Isles, but definitely not. I, I'm a gamer and I enjoy. I, I love. <laughs> Come on. To loss. Can you solve this mystery? Do you consider yeah. yourself a pad? So it caught clearly mismatching speakers, but also clips from the same speaker that are atypical, such as laughing or coughing. This speaker verification model seems to work really well for this kind of thing, but it may be a little slow for your needs. PyNote is used by a lot of people for its diarization rization, but you can also use its models to compute embeddings for audio files. Then use SciPy and the distance function to compute the cosine distance between two embeddings. I store the results in a data frame and then filter it to preview the files. If the threshold seems about right, you can use some logic to move or delete the mismatching files. power! <laughs> Comparing computed embeddings could be a way to save yourself some time if you need to verify audio for a dataset. Removing clips that diverge a lot from others will greatly speed up training convergence and will give you output that sounds closer to your representative samples. I think that's about enough for this one. I'll try to get all the relevant links in the description, and if I miss something, just let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching!